Hey guys, we have received a care package from ASUS and it contains the body of the next generation computing. It's the Maximus Z690 Hero mobile board for the Intel 12th gen processor and it certainly arrived in style. Inside the first section we find the expected mobile box, but there's more. Below the next door we have the Gale Polaris memory. This is the new 32GB kit of DDR5 memory that is compatible with the new CPUs. In the next box, we also have a huge 360ml liquid all-in-one cooler, which features a display as well as Noctua Industrial PPC fans. Is Asus hinting at Intel CPUs will run really hot? Well, we're going to have to check that out in the upcoming video, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. This was actually a pretty nice unboxing experience. And as always, the combination of deep red and black grabs the attention straight away. Okay, now that we've opened all the boxes, let's go over some specs for the new ROG Maximus Z690 Hero. In the box, we find the motherboard itself. Right below it, it has all the accessories, which include the Wi-Fi antennas, as well as GPU anti-sag bracket. Next to this, we have a nice USB drive with all the motherboard drivers. And lastly, we have something unexpected. This is the ROG Hyper M.2 expansion card using PCIe Gen 5x8 interface. It supports two M.2 drives with the first drive supporting PCIe Gen 5 and the second one running at PCIe Gen 4 speeds. Before we get into the details of the board, let me run through a few important highlights. As mentioned earlier, this board is for the 12th generation of Intel CPUs. It is not backwards compatible, as the new CPUs are using LGA 1700 socket in comparison to the last gen LGA 1200. The socket itself is slightly taller to accommodate the extra pins. There are three main changes in this generation. We now have DDR5 support as well as DDR4 on some selected boards. There are four DIMM slots supporting up to 128 gigabytes of capacity. And as it stands right now, this board can support RAM speeds way past 6,000 mega transfers. With the launch of DDR5, there are two types of memory modules. Some will be unlocked ready for overclocking and some lower end ones may have locked voltage on the regulator, also known as PMIC. Asus claims that they have found a way to unlock it and push memory speeds higher and tighten the timings. They have also preloaded some profiles with optimized settings for the main manufacturers such as Micron, Samsung and SK Hynix memory kits. It can be enabled in AEMP or Asus Enhanced Memory Profiles. This is something that we'll certainly be testing in the future. Moving along the board, the top two expansion slots here are PCIe Gen 5 by 16 with support for bifurcation. The bottom slot is wired up to the Z690 chipset and is running PCIe Gen 4 speed with just four lanes. There are two somewhat unusual things on this board. Just to the right of the expansion slots, there is a little button called Q Release, which is linked to the top PCIe mechanism. Pushing this will release the lock and allow for an easy removal of the expansion card. It is a nice little touch, as with the larger heat sinks around the mobile board and chunky graphics cards, it sometimes is really hard to reach the locking mechanism. Another unusual feature is the extra 6-pin power connector next to the standard ATX power. This is actually supplementary power for the 16-lane PCIe expansions. By default, these only have 27 watts of power flowing through them. With the additional power, the number goes up to 60 watts. Next, we have M.2 slots. There are three of them on board, as well as the two optional in the aforementioned Hyper M.2 add-on card. The top slot is PCIe Gen 4, wired up directly to the CPU. The bottom two slots are wired up to the chipset. Left one is PCIe Gen 3, and the right one can be either PCIe Gen 4 or SATA. I really like that all of these M.2 slots feature the Q latch technology and we're slowly but surely moving away from using the tiny little screws to secure down the drives. It was such a small thing but always caused such a big pain in the backside. One thing to note about the Hyper M.2 expansion, if you get yourself a PCIe Gen 5 NVMe drive, then you must plug this card into the middle PCIe expansion slot to ensure that it is compatible, otherwise it will be running at PCIe Gen 4 speeds. Using this card will make both top and middle PCIe slots run at 8 lanes each. And while we are on the subject of storage, there are 6 SATA connectors at the bottom right, as well as 2 USB 3 headers right next to them, both supporting 5 gigabit speeds. The USB-C header just above supporting a whopping 20 gigabit speed. However, to get that speed, make sure that whatever you are connecting to is also supporting it. Since this is a high-end board, it does not lack options for cooling your components. It boasts huge VRM heatsinks, as well as 8 fan headers. Three of the case headers also feature Asus Hydronode technology, which allows you to daisy chain up to three fans per header and control them individually. At the bottom of the board, there are also headers for water cooling, including water in and out temperature, as well as flow rate and separate thermal sensor header. 
If you were to install a bunch of fans, you're more than likely to also have RGB. This board has three ARGB headers as well as a single RGB header to keep your system lit. For the overclockers and tinkerers out there, it has all the expected set of tools. There is start and reset button as well as flex button that can be remapped to any other function such as booting into safe mode. At the top, there is also a set of status LEDs as well as Q code LEDs for error codes. As far as communications is concerned, this small board features the latest Wi-Fi 6E standard, hardware for Bluetooth 5.2 and a single 2.5 gigabit network, which should keep most gamers pretty happy. At the back, there's even more great options. We have the clear CMOS and BIOS flashback buttons, HDMI 2.1 port and two Thunderbolt 4 ports. Next to them, there are seven more 10 gigabit USB ports, one type C and six type A. At the bottom, there's a full array of audio ports for those who want to run their speaker system from their PC. Overall, this board has it all. Support for a new PC Agent 5 standard, the new DDR5, as well as great connectivity. I'm sure the price of his Z690 Hero will make people think twice about it, but if you want something high-end, this might be it. We'll delve deeper into performance in the upcoming video, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. If you want to check out any of the items covered in this video, the links will be in the description below. I hope you found this useful. Don't forget to smash that thumbs up and subscribe for more. We'll see you guys in the next one.